Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at Fuser. Fuser is a layering and performance environment which allows you to load up to three instances of any of the DCAM synthesizers. You can apply insert, auxiliary and master effects and it also has a bank of LFOs and envelope followers, a step sequencer with four engines and a key mapper which allows you to create key splits. Part of Fuser's immense power is its modularity. For example, if I want to load up Cypher into synth slot 1 and use Cypher's LFO to modulate one of the master effects, I can do. Or if I want to use the same LFO to modulate something in synth slot 2, again that's entirely possible. So let's have a look around Fuser. What we're looking at here is the global page. The global page is where you're going to spend most of your time when you're not directly tweaking synth or effects parameters or messing around with the step sequencer. The first thing to note here is that Fuser is multi-timbral, so it can receive on 16 different MIDI channels. And we can set up how Fuser responds to those MIDI channels. By default, MIDI channel 1 is currently assigned to KeyMap. The KeyMapper allows us to create keyboard splits and route the incoming MIDI to a variety of destinations. We'll cover this a bit more shortly. One of the other things we can do is directly control the three synth slots with different MIDI channels. For example, here we've got MIDI channel 2 controlling synth 1, MIDI channel 3 controlling synth 2 and MIDI channel 4 controlling synth 3. You can also send MIDI channels direct to any of the sequencer engines. Let's start by loading in a synth. I'm going to load Amber into slot 1 and pick a preset. Now let's apply an insert effect. Let's say a phaser and we'll choose a preset Now let's add some reverb. I want to do this as an auxiliary effect so that it's available to all three synth slots. This is where I can send varying amounts of this channel to the auxiliary send 1. And let's just go and edit our reverb. I want it on 100% wet because it's on a send effect. Let's increase the size a little bit and the time. That's nice. Now let's add another synth to the mix. I'm going to load Cypher into slot 2. Instead of picking a preset from the preset browser here, I can also go to the synth edit page and choose one in the normal way. I'm going to choose a keyboard sound that I can arpeggiate. Let's have Vibrant. You'll notice that we're not hearing synth 2 there. Let's take a look at the key map page. Currently, our only active key map is going straight to synth 1 and not 2. So if we activate 2, you'll hear the cipher patch there. Now I want to arpeggiate this cipher patch so I'm going to use the animator. First of all we're going to use engine 1, there are 4 available. And I'm going to switch it to arpeggiator mode. Maybe have a 2 octave range and a forward and reverse style and I want the destination to be synth number 2. Again you'll notice we can't hear the arpeggiator yet. This is because of the key map again. Currently my MIDI channel is routed straight to synth 1 or 2, but what I want to do is route it to animator engine 1. And the final thing I need to do 
because I'm hosting Fuser in Live, is activate Live's transport panel. When Fuser is hosted as a plugin, its master transport controls are linked directly to the host master transport controls. So now we should be able to hear our arpeggio. <laughs> So there it is. Let's adjust the volumes a little bit. And let's apply some delay to that. Let's take a look at that arpeggio sound in a bit more detail. We'll go straight to the Synth 2 tab here. And I can make any normal adjustments to the sound, just as if I'm working in the Synth itself. It's worth noting that any changes you make within Fuser to the synths themselves do not affect the master synth preset that we loaded. If I was to save this whole Fuser preset, the preset keyboard vibrant from the Cypher library wouldn't be affected at all. So let's say we wanted to split these two synths across the keyboard. In the Keymapper page, we'd create two keymaps. We'd send one to Synth1 and one to Animator Engine1. We're going to have our pad sound below the C3 key and we're going to have our arpeggio sound above it. Another nice feature of the key map page is that we can adjust the velocity curve using these parameters here. Finally, let's take a look at the eight macro performance knobs up here. By default, all the Fuser presets have some of these knobs assigned. The idea is that you control these knobs via your favorite MIDI controller, and they can be assigned to do just about anything within Fuser, from tweaking the cutoff of a filter to stepping through the values of a step sequencer. Let's apply macro control 1 to our arpeggio's filter cutoff. If I go to synth 2 and choose an empty mod slot, the first submenu you see is the macro submenu. Choose macro number 1 and apply a destination. The synth cutoff. Now, when I tweak macro 1 from my controller keyboard, you'll hear the cutoff being modulated. And I can name the macro there. That concludes our introduction to Fuser.